Susanna? Yes? Come see. Oh, Alex. Well, I know it's a little boring because I used the same pattern, but I used it in a new way. Okay, it's last the opposite night at dinner, of boring. Well, last night at dinner we used the big white chargers, but today we're using the big blue chargers with the bowls because it's lunch and we're serving a winter stew, and I wanted something different, but I was so in love with these dishes, I've used them twice, but in two different ways. And that's what your mantra is, is about always reinterpreting Absolutely. and layering all your different and collections. Sets and breaking them up and using them in new ways and sort of making it almost different all the time. Now what I didn't know, which I learned last night, is that almost all of your many, many collections that you mix, it's all blue and white. And that you took that inspiration from this fireplace tile? Absolutely. So we renovated this house uh -huh. uh, a few times. And I just love the idea of Delft tiles and I wanted to incorporate it in the dining room. Once I did that, I thought, how divine. Now, I'm just going to collect blue and white dishes and tie the tiles into the table. So it's all kinds of blue and white. It's Chinese porcelain, it's French things, it's faience, it's, you know, things made in Portugal. It's just a variety, but it gives my collection a focus. When we set the table, you said, it's never been done in this way before. Because, well, because again, I'm even mixing placemats and right. napkins. I'm right, doing it right. all in a different way. I'm changing a different glass. Oh my God, I realize we forgot salt and pepper. We have to add those to the table. But again, you know, it's always a little unique. I've never used that faience cash po with these dishes. So it's just fun. And it's, it's like, you know what? It's like a little creative outlet for me too. And I think it's great for people to have something to do at home that's creative, but it's just not that much work. It's just fun. And I would like to add that you walk the walk. This isn't just stage. You really eat like this. Oh my you God. set we your table like this. Every table. All meals, so children, every, grandchildren, pieces, not everybody. Before tables ever set here, I'm showing pictures of everything. Even if I'm out and the table's being set while I'm not here, they send me photos for me to approve. I tweak them. I change it. I have these wonderful books, which I are look books. books. Yeah, they're great. Look books with all my linens, with all my different dishes, with all my different silverware. Everything you touch should be beautiful. And you need to use those beautiful things. What are we saving them for? Exactly. I mean, it's ridiculous. You sh your good china should be used all the time. And especially for the holidays. People, my friends come for dinner. Our family, everybody loves. It's such a wonderful conversation piece to have a beautiful table. Salt and pepper time. Okay, oh, so. Oh, Alex. This is insane. I told in you. In the best way. I have oh a little gosh. bit of an addiction. But I think these are so pretty in the country. I love these little quails. But look so how many you can... have of each. Well, but again, you know, I do big parties yes, and I entertain. Right. And for the holidays, you know, I have 25 people for dinner. So I need salt and pepper shakers all over the wear. table. Alex, I want people to hear this great tip. This is next level placemat 101. So yeah, it's, it's what it's, do you do? It's, Tell it's, sure everything's me. important you know to mm -hmm. me so it's very important when you put your hand on the placemat that you don't feel the table and it's not hard it's soft so we have made for every placemat we have these wonderful felt liners that act sort of as cushions also so that the placemats really don't move around on the table it keeps them flat and it also just gives that extra level of luxury Suzanne Angel I think right there right there perfect these are yeah. like little quails yeah aren't they charming here with them like that. It's funny, when we were going for a walk yesterday and it was sort of stormy and we were walking to the beach and you were like, you know, Suze, I'm not an outdoors type of guy, well, I but, I, but you love nature. Well, I love Literally, nature and I love house. nature in the decorative arts and I like man manipulated nature. I love that phrase, man manipulated nature, in the most beautiful way. So yes. from your flowers to the flowers that I see on the plates to all these touches the throughout bamboo, the house. Yep. And the bamboo and the faux bois and the... You know, I love all of that. I love it. And, and, and again, you know, I love fresh flowers cut. I love them in containers, in gilded cups. I love flowers. And you have flowers here every weekend every that week. you are here. They're right. very important And Anastasia and I, the Sag Harbor Florist, we, we go over sort of every week how it's going to be different and how we're going to use leaves and flowers and flowering plants. And, you know, it brings nature into the house just the way I love having the dogs running around and pets. And, you know, you see in the cabinet there are lions and, you know, little puppies. And I, I love animals and I love nature. But again, interpreted by man. So it's so funny. 
on my way in here, I opened up the wrong door, and I got a whole closet full of more tabletop. Oh, I'm like, oh. this isn't the doorway to Alex. Oh, my God. Well, you know I just keep getting rid of coat closets and adding dish closets. I love that. How's your tea? It's so good. Now, is this the world Copenhagen that we were it talking is. about last night? So, so anyway, you know, I, I, obviously I love blue and white. And Royal Copenhagen is such a beautiful collection. And they make multiple stories in their collection of different dishes. So what I did is I wanted to have enough for big parties. So I have 60 dishes, but in three different patterns of Royal Copenhagen. So I think that's so So I can mix and match. So I could have 12 people for dinner right. with the dinner dish and then the the, 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 dinner, the appetizer and the dinner dish being two different styles. It's just more fun. And it's more about mixing and matching than one set of china that you always use right, which together. Gets boring. And actually, that brings me to my next point. Not everybody has the storage space. Absolutely. Maybe the budget or the or the time or the interest, so, really. Here I am, I want to have a more interesting table. I don't have a lot. I perhaps only have 12 white plates. What would be your biggest recommendation to me about just livening it up a little well, bit? Well, if you're young and you don't have wedding china, or if you didn't register for wedding china. Or you're not married. Right, or you do. You and you like to entertain. How do you bump it up? Well, without I think, well, I think the best way is really to shop it off. To look at local auction houses pretty much in every state. Find them out. Go Flea and look. markets, right? Flea markets are great also. Antique centers. Mm -hmm. You know, they're dwindling, but still some towns have them. And just go and look around and find something. Find an antique set of china that you love. And find something contemporary to mix in with it. Okay. And so then it just has a new life.